What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta Healthier. Today I'll be reviewing the NSCA Certified Personal Trainer Certification. The NSCA is one of the most respected names in the industry, but is their program as good as their reputation implies? That's what we're here to find out. This certainly could be the most surprising review I've done so far. It's not my intent, but I think I'm going to piss a few people off with this one. Throughout this video, I'll be comparing and contrasting the NSCA cert to other CPT certifications like ACE, NASM, and ISSA. I'm going to attempt attempt to only make those comparisons every so often though. I want this video to mostly be about the NSCA. I'm not affiliated with any of these organizations by the way, which is nice because that allows me to just call it like I see it. Before we get into all the juicy stuff today, all I ask is that you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. This is the best way to support us over here at Sorta Healthy, and if you're not familiar with us, free personal trainer education, well, that's what we do. Thank you so much for that support everyone on to the rest of the video. So like many of my other review videos, I've broken down today's discussion into two parts. There are three main things that I like about the NSCA and the CPT certification, and there are three main issues that I have with it as well. I'll be talking about the pros and cons in no particular order, and we'll start off with what is likely the biggest benefit of obtaining this certification. The NSCA has a great reputation, and having this certification will earn you some extra respect, and it will help you get a job. I've always said that a base training certification course really only has to do two things. One, teach you the basics and how to safely get started. Two, get you a job. The NSCA certifications seem to do a pretty good job on the first one, more on that later, and a really good job on number two. The NSCA has been around since 1978, and since then, they've been leaders in the field. I've always viewed the NSCA certifications as more challenging than their counterparts, and as more thorough when it comes to teaching lifting technique. After reviewing this course, I can confirm that both of those things are true. Because both of those things are true, particularly the course being more challenging, it makes sense that having an NSCA certification would garner a little bit of extra respect. As someone who hires trainers, when I see an incoming resume with NSCA on it, I know that person means business. Obviously, we'll get into whether or not I think this certification is actually better than the competition, but I have always respected the NSCA certs as much or more than the competition simply because, again, they're hard courses to complete. If you're a hiring manager like me, on some level you think, they pass that course, they must know their stuff. I want them on my team. Of course, passing an NSCA course doesn't actually mean that you know your stuff, but the point still stands, the NSCA's reputation gets them some extra credit. On to the first thing that I don't like about this course, and that is that this is barely a course by 2022 standards. As I said before, I knew going in that the NSCA courses were tougher, aka more challenging to complete compared to most of the competition. Recently, I've gone through the ISSA, ACE, and NASM CPT courses. In the past, I've completed other training certifications, such as the NCCPT Personal Training Certification and the ACSM Exercise Physiologist Certification. To be honest, I've been through more of these personal training certification programs than anyone should. I must have some masochistic tendencies to keep doing this to myself. Anyways, I only share that information with you because going through so many of these courses gives me unique insight on what a base personal training certification course should be. Unfortunately, the NSCA isn't offering you the ideal personal training course. In my opinion, what we have here isn't even close to that. When you jump into ACE, NASM, or ISSA CPT courses, you'll almost be overwhelmed with the sheer amount of content that's thrown at your face. There are modules for each chapter that break things down somewhat simply. You have videos for each chapter, audio guides, an abundance of practice quizzes, and a whole bunch of other things included to make absorbing information and passing your test easier. With the NSCA CPT course, you're given some of that stuff, but it's nowhere near as comprehensive as what you're getting with those other certs. The NSCA stuff feels amateurish in comparison. While reviewing all this NSCA material, I would constantly see things like this emblem pop up showing how long this specific course has been around for. Well, to be honest, most of the time, it did feel like I was taking a course created in 1993. This is very much much an old school slog through the textbook where you're taking lots of notes along the way, and then possibly you're repeating that process over again. I expected this course to be more challenging than the competition because the material was more complicated. That was only partially true. The main reason that this course was harder was because they didn't give you the same resources to learn the material. Now, I did just mention that the material featured in this course was a bit more complicated than what you'd expect in a competitor's course like NASM CPT course 
for example. This brings me to the next thing that I like about the NSCA CPT course, and that is that there is a bigger focus on proper lifting technique. One of my main criticisms of other base personal training certification courses is that they don't spend nearly enough time going over proper lifting technique and cueing. Considering that at least half of our job is safely taking clients through weight training sessions, I've always been baffled that the other organizations don't emphasize this information or really even test you on it. Having recently taken the ACE and NASM CPT exams and having talked with other trainers who've taken both, questions on goofy social theories that have little to no effect on your job are common, and lifting technique questions are rare within most trainer exams. Luckily, with the NSCA, you get the opposite of that. On the big final exam, you'll be shown videos of clients doing exercises and you'll have to figure out the best way to correct their form. Of course, this is way more applicable to what you'll actually be doing on the job. When I purchased the NSCA package, the study guide that was included mentioned two essential books, The Essentials of Personal Training and the Exercise Technique Manual for Resistance Training. Like I mentioned before, if you buy this NSCA CPT certification program, expect to spend a lot of time with those two resources. Anyways, the reason I'm mentioning both of these resources now is because even after your test is done, this is still great to have around. After all these years in the field, this is actually the first time that I've gone through this thing. But even if you're experienced in the field, this information still has a lot of value beyond that big test. The next issue that I have with the National Strength and Conditioning Association is how confusing and bad their online interface is when trying to buy a certification. This one isn't a huge deal breaker or anything like that, so I probably won't spend too much time on it, but it is pretty annoying. So when you first click on this NSCA CPT tab and scroll down, you'll see this. NSCA CPT exam registration fee, $300 for members and $435 for non-members. I already don't like the looks of this. Is this only the cost of the exam? Do I get any course stuff with that? Do I really care about being a member? We scroll down a little bit further and none of those questions are really answered right away. I go through a bunch of these other tabs and it's still pretty unclear what I'm getting here. But whatever, we'll just keep moving on, I guess. Eventually we click here and it finally looks like things are starting to make sense. We have three different tiers, six really if you include member and non-member pricing. I was actually buying this course for a trainer who works for me and is about to be done with a four-year exercise science degree. We thought this package right here made sense for her since she has a background in exercise science and you get these two things that come with this package as well. This option here is kind of BS though, since these things down here really aren't all that helpful at all. You pretty much need the NSCA books if you don't have them. Of course, I didn't know that at the time, so I bought this package right here. Then I had to go back and buy these things separately. And then we went back and paid for this too. None of this stuff was a deal breaker, like I said before, but this whole process was way more annoying than it should have been. I'm really not a fan of the member and non-member pricing either. Keep it simple, guys. The last thing that I like about the NSCA are the resources available for people who complete their programs. This really isn't a benefit of the NSCA CPT program in particular, rather it's a benefit of being an NSCA member and having completed at least one of their certs. It seems like the NSCA offers some of the best continuing education opportunities out there for trainers and other health professionals. I was especially impressed with how many high level in-person events there were to choose from. I mean, look at all of these. You're not really going to see this many advanced in-person events from any other organization. Many of the leading experts in the field have NSCA certs. Really more so the CSCS rather than the CPT cert. Still though, it's cool that as an NSCA trainer, you're under the same umbrella as many of the top dogs in the field. The NSCA also offers some other online resources that seem quite promising. As you can see, there's no shortage of options for completing your CECs with NSCA resources. The last thing that I don't like about the NSCA CPT certification course is that it doesn't necessarily prepare you for the final test all that well. Two things on this. One, the NSCA aren't the only ones guilty of this. Much of the competition is also throwing a ton of stuff at you that has very little chance of showing up on the final exam. Two, a lot of this course not preparing you well for the final exam comes down to what I talked about earlier in this video. The course really isn't very well set up for 2022 and beyond. I'm just one source of information and just like everyone else, even though I try not to be biased, I probably have some level of 
bias. In my personal experience, every trainer I've talked to has said the NSCA CPT course taught them about anatomy, physiology, cueing, exercise form, running mechanics, periodization, programming, and a whole bunch of other things. Pretty much everyone that I've talked to has said that the NSCA does a pretty good job of teaching you all of those things that I just mentioned. For better or worse, it seems like a lot of that stuff is barely featured on the final exam. Cueing, exercise form, programming, that stuff seems to be well represented on there. Things like running mechanics, anatomy, physiology, etc. That stuff all seems really important when you're going through the text, but isn't on the final test to the same degree. To me, some of this is unavoidable. When you have so much stuff to teach and only 155 multiple choice questions to jam everything into, some areas are going to be featured on that final test more than others. The bigger issue I have is that with programs like ACE and NASM, the practice quizzes and tests appear to match the actual final exam quite a bit more closely than what you're getting here. About half of the people that I talked to found that the ACE and NASM practice quizzes and tests helped to adequately prepare them for the final exam. Pretty much everyone found them helpful at least. My sample size of NSCA certified personal trainers is admittedly smaller, but pretty much everyone who went through the NSCA program that I talked to didn't feel that the practice quizzes and tests were all that helpful, aka they didn't cover things that appeared on the final exam as often. Keep in mind, this is just my experience with these programs. This might not always be the case. One thing that I think makes this seem like a bigger problem than it is, is that when you take the big NSCA practice test, it doesn't actually tell you which answers you got wrong. Considering that the practice test is 140 multiple choice questions, having to guess at which ones you got wrong is pretty annoying. It would be a much more helpful diagnostic tool, aka I didn't get this queuing question right, better go review some more queuing stuff if they told you which questions you got wrong. Anyways, long story short, what we're left with here with the NSCA CPT course is an interesting blend of pros and cons. On one hand, I think a lot of the information you're getting here is actually better than what you're getting with the other base personal training certification courses. The bigger emphasis on resistance training goes a long way for me. On the other hand, this is probably the worst base personal training course that I've taken in a while. It certainly feels like it was made in the 90s, maybe early 2000s, not 2022. So I think what you end up with here is a course that's probably only the best choice for a select group. The ACE and NASM certs are most likely going to be the best for the average person looking to get into the field. The information is meh at times, but most people will find it much easier to absorb that material. The ISSA course is possibly the best if you're not a strong test taker. The course is decent and the final exam is open book, and that tells you most of what you need to know there. The NSCA course is the best choice for you if you're a strong student and you learn best from reading a textbook and taking notes. I don't know how many trainers fit into that group, but I think that's where all these courses fit into the big picture. To me, if you're that sort of student who does well with textbooks book studying, you'd be better off with going for your CSCS from the NSCA. Granted, to go for your CSCS, you will need to have a bachelor's degree in a related field, so that is a big obstacle to deal with. Based on everything we talked about today, I'm going to put this course at a B-. The ability of this certification to help you get a job and the focus on resistance training still make it a B course, granted a low B, despite the downsides. Having gone through more courses now, I think ISSA should go here too, right behind this one. I feel like I overrated it a bit in the beginning. I've had a good amount of people struggle to get jobs after getting their ISSA certification. So I think based on all of that, this is fair placement. What do you guys think though? If anyone has taken this course, please share your thoughts on things down below in the comments. I really do always appreciate that feedback. If you agree with what I said, great. If you disagree with what I said, that's cool too make sure to let me know down below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because both of those things do help the channel to grow and that does allow me to create more free content for all of you. That's all that we have for today, everyone. Hopefully all of you found this video helpful and until next time, stay sort of healthy.